We've been continuing, uh, well, I'm continuing a series that we started a few weeks ago that'll just run through the summer whenever I'm preaching at least, and it's simply titled Words to Live By. Words to Live By, and this is uh, the third or fourth part of this. Uh, when we started out, we, we, we looked at 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 6 and 7, where it just says, don't have a spirit of fear. Amen. So the first word we are to live by is really we're to live by faith and not by fear. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And we've looked at a couple other things today. We're going to look at 1 Corinthians chapter 14. 1 Corinthians chapter 14. And last, uh, last week, I would say Monday, maybe right, you know, the very next day, we had preached, we had church, we did all the stuff. It was wonderful. And I'm always kind of preparing and just kind of like studying and reading and just meditating on whatever the Lord may have for us the next few weeks. And uh, the Lord just, just spoke this to my heart, I believe, for us for this part of of this series, and what he said to me was this. Are you ready for it? Go after a life of love. Go after a life of love. Go after a life of love. And so I thought, all right, and uh, I've, I've preached along the lines of the love of God many times, of course, uh, over the years, and every year I try to, try to cover this, uh, not only because we need it as a church, but because I need it myself. Can I have a better amen right there? It's the truth. I need it myself. And so because of that, uh, when I felt like the Lord just reminded me or spoke those words to me, it, I knew it was a verse of Scripture. It's a passage of Scripture, and it's from 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and uh, verse 1, and this is the Message Bible. In the Message Bible, 1 Corinthians 14, 1, it says, Go after a life of love as if your life depended on it because it does. Go after a life of love as if your life depended on it because it does. A couple other translations just simply say in the New King James, it just says, Pursue love. Pursue love. The Amplified Bible in the classic says, Eagerly pursue and seek to acquire this love. Somebody say this love. This love and make it your aim and your great Quest, the Passion Bible, reads like this, says, So above all else, let love be the beautiful prize for which you run. Let love be the beautiful prize for which you run. So back to what, what I said at the beginning, which is the message Bible says, Go after a life of love, a life of love. And again, of course, this is 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 1, uh, which uh, is immediately after 1 Corinthians chapter what? Come on, I got the smart people here this Sunday. What's after, what's right before 14? 13, right? Which 1 Corinthians 13 is known as what? The love chapter, right? It's all, it's all, about, all about the love of God, right? So this, this verse of scripture is actually just a continuation of what was being said or just kind of a follow through to what's being said in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. In fact, it would have been okay if it was just at the very end of 1 Corinthians chapter 13 because it fits so appropriately, right? So after all that God says about love in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, we'll look at that in just a moment. Here it just kind of wraps it up and just says, all right, go after a life of love. Go after a life of love. Go after a life of love. Well, in the Amplified Bible, it says, uh, seek to acquire or make this, this love your aim. This love your aim, your, your great quest. This, this, this love. Well, what kind of love? Well, the kind of love we just got through talking about in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. What kind of love is that? It, are there different kinds of love or is love just love like is love is love or is or are there different kinds of love right I mean you really have to think about it because apparently this love that he's talking about may not be the same as every other kind of love that there may be out there in fact uh, in the New Testament there are actually four different words Greek words that are translated love and you'd have to look those up to know exactly what kind of love that it's talking about. First Corinthians chapter 13, it's talking about the God kind of love, but there's different kinds of love. I'll give these to you for those who you might be just a little interested. One of the Greek words for love is phileo. Phileo. We might have this for the screen if we have it. Yeah, there you go. Phileo. And I'll just read it to you. It's on the screen. It says, uh, it means affectionate regard or friendship. In both ancient and modern green, this, this type of love has given take. It includes loyalty to friends, family, and community. This is really a friendship love. It's a strong bond existing between people who have common interests or activity. It's one of the reasons that the city of Philadelphia is the city of brotherly love, right? That's what it's talking about right here. Another is storge, and it just simply means affection. 
It is natural affection that is felt both by parents and offspring. It's like it's the love between family members, brother, sister, mom, dad, that, that kind of love. Third kind would be eros, which is this is physical or passionate love, romance. It's with sensual desire and longing, right? This is kind of funny that this is one of the definitions. It's pure emotion without the balance of logic, <laughs> right? Like, like love at first sight, you know, like love at first sight. Okay, so those are three kinds of love, but then the kind of love that we're talking about today, this love, the kind of love that we are to pursue a life like or of is agape. Everybody say agape. All right, and that's, that's A-G-A-P-E. This is true unconditional love. Probably the simplest way to define it is the God kind of love, but this love is selfless. It gives with nothing in return. It's how God loves us, right? The love that brings forth caring regardless of the circumstance. Regardless of the circumstance. Well, in 1 John 4, in verse 8, it says it this way. The, the person who does not, does not love does not know God. The Message Bible says doesn't know the first thing about God. But here in the New King James, it says, for God is love. How many ever heard that? Yeah, God is love. Well, what kind of love is he? Well, it's not necessarily phileo, storge, eros. He's agape. God is agape. What is that? God is, he's, his love is unconditional. Unconditional. He loves without, and re, without regard of the circumstance. It doesn't shift, doesn't change. In fact, our roots are to go down into the love of God. His love for us. Amen. This is the kind of love that is referred to in 1 Corinthians 13. This is the kind of love that's referred to in 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and verse 1 when he says, pursue love, pursue love. Make this your aim. Make this love, this love your great quest, your great quest in life. Well, to get a good kind of working definition of what this love looks like or how it, how it acts, how it behaves, all right, you have to go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. So 1 Corinthians 13, beginning with verse 4 all the way through verse 8, this is going to be in the Amplified Bible. That means, all right, what is being said in the original language is being amplified, all right? So that's, that's what's happening here. Are y'all still with me today? I know it's not February, but you can stay, still hand, handle a love message in June, right? Okay. This is what it says, 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 8. Love endures long and is patient and kind. Do we have it for the screen? Can we put it on the screen? There you go. Patient and kind. Love never is envious nor boils over with jealousy, is not boastful or vainglorious, it does not display itself haughtily, it is not conceited, arrogant, and inflated with pride. It is not rude or unmannerly, does not act unbecomingly. Love, God's love in us, does not insist on its own rights or its own way, for it is not self-seeking. I'm just pause for just a second. How many of y'all already think, well, there's no way I can do that. Like this, this, I'm already failing right now. Like when you said the first, you know, when, when you said it endures long as patient kind, it's like, well, I'm done. There you go. We're just done. Don't, don't, you know, don't throw this to the side just yet. Just let's, let's follow through with this. All right. It is not self-seeking. It is not touchy or fretful or resentful. It takes no account of the evil done to it. It pays no attention to a suffered wrong. It does not rejoice at injustice and unrighteousness, but rejoices when right and truth prevail. Love bears up under anything and everything that comes, is ever ready to believe the worst of every person. <clears throat> Sorry, I messed that up. Let's go back just a little bit. I really did. Love believes the best of every person. Its hopes are faithless under all circumstances and it endures everything without weakening. Love never fails never fades out or becomes obsolete or comes to an end. One translation says love never stops loving. Love never stops. It never fails. It never gives up. So then this, the pursuit of not only to acquire, but to develop and mature in this love. And the Amplified Bible says, make this your quest. Make this your quest. Well, uh, you know, just probably a, a good question to ask would be, how long is that going to take? <laughs> you know, how long is a quest? You know, I mean, what? How long is it going to take for for this? And I would just, I would just say, why don't you just maybe stop thinking about how many months or years or decades that you think it's going to take for you to like? Now I'm really, I've really arrived in this thing, and just be committed to growing and developing in it for the rest of your life. 
That'd probably just be, just be the best thing. And, and the reason I say that to you is because I, I've grown up on messages like this. I've, I've read books about this over and over and over and over again. I've seen great examples of this from great ministers. I have walked in it and been a doer of it. And yet I have still had times recently where I have failed when it comes to walking in this love, all right? That doesn't mean I am a failure. That doesn't mean that God doesn't love me. It doesn't mean you're a failure. It doesn't mean like you're a total loser and you're a bad Christian. That's not what it, but what is he saying? What is Paul saying? He's like, but yes, yet make this your pursuit though. Like keep this at the forefront of all that you are doing, the way that you are thinking, the way that you are living, right? But you, and in order for you to do that, you're going to at least have to know what it is. And you're at least going to have to remind yourself of it on a regular basis so that you can endeavor to do this, act on it every day of your life, right? Make this your aim. Go after a life of love. Well, it would be absolutely impossible for you to go after a life of this kind of love if you had no ability or capacity to actually do this. It'd be like God setting you up for failure. You know, it'd be like God saying, this is how love acts. This is how love behaves. And I'm, I'm requiring you to walk in this kind of love. But just so you know, it's going to be impossible. And the rest of your life, you're never going to be able to actually love like that. You're only going to have brotherly love. You're only going to have love that's like temperamental. You're only going to have love that can turn to hatred just like that. You're only going to have that kind of, but that's not how it works. Because Romans 5 and verse 5 says, says it this way, that the love of God has been shed abroad or poured out, poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit that's been given unto us. The love of God, agape, that's what's being said, has been poured out, where? In your heart. Well, it's probably good to know that it's not poured out in your flesh. In your flesh still gonna have stuff and issues. It's not poured out in your mind. Your mind will be, need to be renewed to what this love is. It's poured out in your heart. Where is that? In your spirit, your inward man, the real you. Scripture calls that the hidden man of the heart. You are a spirit. You possess a soul. That's your mind, will, and emotions. And you live in a body that is in earth suit that while it is functioning, you will be here on planet earth. All right? But the love of God is poured out Where? in your heart or in your spirit. When does that happen? Well, when you get saved, when you make Jesus the Lord of your life, there's a wonderful transformation. You are made a new creation in Christ Jesus. Old things are passed away, everything's become brand new. That's fantastic news, right? So now you are not just like, well, I was going to hell, but I'm going to heaven, even though that is a beautiful truth and it is powerful and it's something you should look forward to, right? There, there's something that has changed. Now the very life of God, the Zoe life of God, life as God has it, has been imparted to your spirit and the love of God has been shed abroad or poured out in your heart by the Holy Spirit. You have the love of God, this kind of love within you. Kenneth E. Hagin said it this way. He said, love is the first fruit of the born again human spirit because of the life that comes from abiding in the life of Christ within. Therefore, we can see that the fruit of the spirit is the fruit of the recreated human spirit because of the life of Christ within our spirits. Isn't that good? Leave it up for just, just a couple seconds here. Light, love is the first fruit of the born again human spirit because of the life that comes from abiding in the life of Christ within Therefore, we can see that the fruit of the Spirit is the fruit of the recreated human spirit because of the life of Christ within our spirits. Now, if you're going to be led by the Holy Spirit, he will lead you to walk in love. But when you are born again, there's an impartation of the love of God. It is one of the or the first fruit of your spirit. First fruit of your spirit. Galatians 5, it just says it this way. But the fruit of the spirit, how many of you ever heard this? The fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness. I mean, all, all the good stuff right there. But the first fruit is what? Love. Somebody just say, I have the love in me. You do. You do. You do. Well, what are you going to do with it? <laughs> What, what are we going to do with what we got? Like, what, what are we going to, what are we going to do? I mean, if this love is, is, is of the heart and we got it and it's probably, probably good to note that that fruit isn't produced fully mature. Fruit isn't produced uh, fully mature. Now, um, how many of you enjoy Apples. 
all the healthy people, you know, like, oh, yeah, I eat apple. How many of you eat apples on a regular basis? Like, it, we lost like 80% of the people who like apples. I like apples, but I like Doritos better. Like, I like apples, but I also like honey buns. You know, like, I like apples, but my taste buds have other things going on that make life challenging. <laughs> Right? So, well, I, I like apples, and, and if, I wanna, if I want an apple, I go to the grocery store. Is that what most of you would do? If you wanted an apple today, you're like, what are you going to do? I'm going to go to the grocery store, like Albertsons, Kroger, Walmart, something like that. I'm going to go somewhere, and I'm going to buy, and they got all kinds of apples there, right? They got like green apples and red apples. They got Granny Smith, and they got, what's all the other kind of apples out there out there? Who? Honey Crisp. Sounds like a great name. It's like crisp, you know. I don't know, unless your teeth aren't firm, you know, I don't know, it might be tough, but uh, right. So there all, there's all kind of apples. So I was just kind of curious because I'm like, well, apple's a fruit and I just go buy it, you know, and it's just there and there's like a hundred of them and I just like look at it and tap it and make sure there's nothing going on crazy with it, you know, as if I know what I'm doing at all. I have no idea what I'm doing at all, but I'm going to pretend like I do because who picks up the first apple and just puts that in the little, you know, the little plastic bag there and like you, you got to look at it, you know what I'm saying? And who knows? And you're definitely going to pick up the one on top because everybody has breathed on it, touched it, sneezed on it. Every, it's just, it's like you don't want the first apple, you know what I mean? And then you get it home and you're like, I think, yeah, I might should wash this thing. Who knows what, like where it was raised and what they sprayed on it and all. Who knows what's going on with this apple? So, so everybody's back to the Doritos, right? You're like, so Doritos actually might be healthier. Uh, <laughs> depends on what pesticides you get on your apple, maybe. <laughs> well, out of curiosity, I'm like, well, it's a fruit, right? And I'm, just, I'm studying about the fruit of love developing and growing and maturing. What is the process of an apple becoming an apple? In the name of Jesus. <laughs> Bless her heart. She wants to know, I feel like. That's what I feel like. She wants to know. What is the process of an apple becoming an apple? So I, I Googled it, which is a blessing. You don't have to go to the library. You don't need an encyclopedia. You don't need a world book atlas to trip, try to figure it out. You can just Google it and you can find all kinds of stuff out, right? And so I Google it. I'm like, what is the developmental process and stages of an apple becoming an apple, right? And so there's actually a lot of things, you know, a lot of things that pop up. But I, I found what I thought w would be good, right? This is, this is a number of pictures that will show you the process of an apple becoming an apple. Do we have picture one, Angelina? She's doing the words tonight. She's doing a great job today. Excuse me. All right. That does not look like an apple. Can we go, go to the next one? Still does not look, at, by the way, this process is about 10 months long. Just what we're going to see is about 10 months long. Someone just like recorded it, took pictures. Go to the next one. Still, still not, not going, go ahead, next one, keep going. And yeah, days are going by, weeks are going by. Keep going. There you go. Oh, wait, wait, we got something going on here. Hold up, buttercup. Keep going. Go to the next one. Keep going. There we go. Keep going. Keep, wait, here we go. We got, whoa, whoa, stop, stop just a second. Well, something's happening here, y'all. At least we know there's some life there. Before, we're like, who knows what's going on with this thing? You know, it looks like, what, what is that? Right? Keep going. Go, go do a couple more. Wait, wait. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah look. What? If you walked by that, you would not be like, I can't wait to get an apple off of that. <laughs> I mean, whew, my mouth's watering right now for that honey crisp. No, keep going. Give me, give me a couple more. Wait, wait. Now, hold up. Hold up. Who would have ever thunk? Some of y'all, y'all are better than me. Y'all know this kind of stuff. You're like super, you're whatever, country or whatever. You get all this. You have apple orchards in your yard or something. Not me. I don't. Who would ever thought there's flowers? It's a, anybody in the room would have walked by that, something like that and you go, man, in just a couple of months, I'm going to pick that thing, slice it up, put some peanut butter on it. You know, I'm like, I can't, I wait. Keep going. Give me a couple more. Give me a couple more. Yeah, yeah, keep going. Okay, all right. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, ooh. That looks like that could be something. It looks more like an avocado to me than it does like an apple, but keep going. Just give me a couple more. Thank you. Now, whoa, hey, hey, hey oh, oh, whoa, what's happening here? Yeah, all right, good, good. Give, give me a couple more, Angeline. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Now, wait, wait, wait. 
What does that look like? That looks like an apple. That looks like that's about to be up in the grocery store or in my mouth. You know what I mean? Like that's, give, give, me, give me all the way to the one where the, where the lady's holding it in her hand. There you go. Let's give it up for the apple. Good job. That apple probably does not exist any longer. It's probably dead and gone, whatever. But the process of that it is a lot more intricate and took a lot more time than, you know, probably most of us would, would think, you know. You think, go to Kroger, just pick whichever one that looks the best, you know. But in the life of that apple, it's months of a process. Can we go back to the very first process? Very first picture, Angeline, go back to the very, if you can manage it, it's like 40 of them. When you get saved, (laughs) don't be disturbed because you still have a flesh fit every now and then, you know. Don't be disturbed because your thinking's all jacked up still. And don't be disturbed because people still get on your nerves and they offend you and they hurt you. Don't, Don't think you're not saved. It's just that's where your love's at. You got it. It's real. It's in you. But it's not fully developed yet. You have the capacity certainly to still forgive and believe the best and be patient and kind. But it's going to take some time for that to mature. One minister said it this way. He says, there's there's no actual spiritual growth without growth and maturity in love at the same time. For anyone who would say, I'm really mature, I'm really developed. I mean, and in 1 Corinthians 13, the first couple of verses, he talks about, you say you can move mountains, where's your love? You say you can speak in tongues and prophesy, where's your love? You say you can whatever, cast out devils. You say you give your body to be burnt. I mean, that's a pretty extreme example to me. It's like martyrdom. You would do that, but you have not love. He says, you are nothing. So in the message, the Bible says, whatever I do, whatever I say, if I I have not love, it says, I am bankrupt without love. You actually have jack squat nothing. And so you can talk a big game. You can, you know what I mean? But if love's not into, that's why Paul would say, go after a life of love. Go, off, go after a life of love. Now, I don't have time to get into too many examples of the Apostle Paul's life, but if you read a little bit about his life, you would know that this would maybe not be his natural or fleshly inclination based upon his life. He could be pretty strong, pretty sharp with his words. At one point, he actually had someone's mouth slapped. I mean, he's kind of edgy. You know what I'm saying? And yet this is the revelation that the Lord gives him to give to the church. So Jesus said, abide in me. Abide in me. Remain, dwell, stay connected to me. Abide in me as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. Abide in me. So then what's in him is in me. And the more time I spend in connection with him, in his word, in his presence, in prayer, the more that will help me when it comes to the fruit of love being developed and matured in my life. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. You have this love within you. You have this love within you. So then once you, once you know what this love is, once you know how this love should act or behave or whatever it is, you know, that, that sort of thing. When you renew your mind to it, what's the next step? What's the next thing now? Well, the next thing here in order for you to grow and develop and mature in love is to exercise that love. I got two amens. Praise the Lord. That was it. That's okay. It's all right. I think it's just the word exercise that got you. It's like, did he say exercise? It's Sunday. It's Sabbath. You know, it's rest day. It's like, we ain't ain't exercise. I'm chillaxing. I ain't doing nothing. Just exercise that love. Exercise that love. 
Now I got a statistic for you that will be uh, somewhat uh, encouraging or discouraging, depending on what part of the spectrum you're on. Uh, but this is from Harvard Medical School, and it's about age-related muscle loss. And there's a word for it that I have tried to get right that I'm not going to read because I feel like I'll mess it up. But I'll give it to you later. It's a natural part of aging. But this is what it says specifically regarding men. How many men do we have in the house? I feel like there should have been some deeper something else. Like I, a grunt or two. Yeah, any men we have in the house? Ugh. I don't know. Please. Thank you. I like that. After age 30, any men over the age of 30? Don't pretend. Just because you dye your hair or you dress, you still got a good look. You, you're getting older. I am too, but it's all right. After age 30, you begin to lose as much as 3 to 5% of your muscle mass per decade. 3 to 5%. Most men will lose about 30% of their muscle mass during their lifetime. 30%. Another study just said that it's, it averages out to about 1% to 2% per year. 1% to 2% per year. Now, <laughs> now, I don't know how many years it was ago. But I, I can remember a time I, when, I, when I was in high school and college and, like, we could play, I could play full court basketball, no problem. You know what I'm saying? Not even sore, really, the next day. Lungs are good, heart's good, feet are good, knees are good, joints are good, everything's good. Don't even need to warm up. You know what I'm saying? Just get on the court and run. No big deal. And play for hours and hours, back and forth, back and forth. Back. Now, that's college. I'm 19, 20 years old. Now, if I was going to get out and play basketball, be like, all right, I got to prepare myself. I got to hydrate. You know what I'm saying? I need to drink a couple of vitamin waters an hour prior leading up to it. You know, maybe go to the store and get some pickle juice before, you know, and just can help myself eat a banana. I don't want to cramp. All these things. And then, then I need like one warm-up game for like 15 minutes. I got warm up. I ain't ready. You know what I'm saying? Like, I need 15 minutes. Just so you know, the first game, I'm going to foul the junk out of you the whole game because I can't keep up. That's what's happening. I can't keep up. So I'm going to slap him, elbow you. You know, I came up in the era of Charles Barkley. You know what I mean? It's just like you elbow, you punch, you kick, and now everybody flops all over the place and they even get touched. It's like, what game are y'all playing out there? Right? So I got one warm up game and then I got one good game. After that one good game, I need to stop because that's, that's all I got. That's all I got. And then the next day, I'm going to get out of bed, and like my shoulder pop, and my elbow pop, and my hip pop, and I get up, and I'm like, my, my legs are sore, and the, this stuff is happening. I'm like, what, did I, what happened? I played basketball for 35 minutes. Took me two hours to cool off. Face is beat red, you know what I mean? Like crazy. Well, but when I was younger, I just roll, you know, just roll. And so I don't remember when it was a few you know, a number of years ago, I, I was uh, feeling my muscles. Am I the only guy that does that? You see me all pretending up in this place, man. You're like, don't. You'll check it out later. I was, I was feeling my muscles, and I felt my left arm, and I thought, no, that's pathetic. Smell, felt like a small child. You'd like an arm. And I'm like, it was just skinny and thin and all that. And I'm like... Golly, I can remember us. I'm like, I'm going to have to do something different. We're going to get, we're going to get back working out. We're going to have to do something. You see these statistics like that don't play. That's for real. That's your, your body. It's my body. It's going to require some intentional movement, some intentional exercise. I'm not trying to look like Arnold Schwarzenegger. I'm not trying to like be, win a bodybuilding contest. I'm not trying to even like look great. I just want to maintain my, my muscle mass, make small gains here and there, but I'm not really trying to make big gains. I just want to, I want to stay, stay right. Right. And the older you get, the more you realize I need my body to function appropriately so I can move, go places, go on a vacation, get on an airplane. Like, Sit in the car. Like, that, it takes. Some of y'all 20-year-olds, you're like, what is he talking about? Just stick around. Just live a little bit. There's a reason all the dads, you know, at the gas station, you know, when you're on a road trip, they get out and they're like, 
My kids make fun of me, and I'm like standing by the car. Calf is tight. Been on that gas pedal to offer two hours from here to Shreveport. It's tough. About to get a Charlie. I'm not really trying to be funny. I'm telling you the truth. Gotta loosen, gotta loosen it up. I got to relax. My kids, if they see me doing it, they're like so embarrassed. They're like, dad, dad, dad. It's like, do we have to stop at Bucky's and do we, do you have to stretch like that? I'm like, yes to both. Yes. A good popcorn at Bucky's and a brisket sandwich. I'm going to Bucky's. There's 10,000 people in Bucky's. It's about to be 10,001 because I'm going. The line's 100 people deep to get gas. I don't care. We going. Makes no sense. I totally agree. We're going. Why are you wasting time? I don't know, but we're going. I'm drawn in. Just take me in. I got to move, though. I got to move. I got to exercise. I, gotta, I got a Fitbit on because I want to make sure I got enough steps every day. This is my life right now. But I'm not playing. I want to be in my 50s. I want to be strong. I want to be healthy. I get my 60s. I want to be strong. I want to be healthy. But it's not going to happen if I start thinking about it at 65 or 75. I got to be now. I got to start thinking about it now. Right? Because I want to develop. I want to get stronger. I want to stay healthy. When it comes to the love of God... I don't hate to break it to you, but let me just break it to you. That love will grow, develop, and mature when you exercise it. Amen. What does that mean? What does that mean? Love endures long when you have to do that. When, it's patient, when you have to be patient and kind, when you do that, when you don't feel like it. When you're not envious, instead you celebrate somebody, not jealous about anybody, you rejoice with them. When you have to forgive somebody, when you don't insist on your own right and your own way, you're not living selfishly, that's exercising the love of God. When you don't pay attention to a suffered wrong, you're exercising the love of God that is within you exercising that love. And when you do that, you're taking another step toward maturity. So if you're sitting there, you're thinking like, well, when will I have opportunities for this? You'll know. You will know. Especially after hearing a message like this, or if you renew your mind to it on a regular basis, you'll know. In that moment, there will be something in your heart, in your spirit, that will compel you to go, what would love do right here? What would love do right here? And your mind go, your mind may go, yeah, but that, that's, that two plus two, that don't, that don't, you know, what you're saying for me to do didn't add up. And your flesh may go, let's not think about it. Let's don't consult love. Just let me act. Let me do what I want to do. And you'll regret it. I, I just finished reading a book by uh, Dr. Orr Roberts, and he, he's in heaven now. My, my daughter Avery goes to his university that he started years ago. Macy's headed there in the fall. It's a great school, charismatic Bible college. And, I mean, yeah, we've got, got all kinds of people going to our year in the church. You know, it's great. Well, he was a, a wonderful charismatic minister for many years. And, uh, but faced a lot of challenge, a lot of difficulty, a lot of criticism for a lot of the things that he did because he felt like the Holy Spirit was leading him to do it, but maybe wasn't popular or maybe was something that was on the edge of what was being done at the time. And so at the end of his book, he, he, covered, he has a couple chapters. One is five things my mom taught me. The second one is five things my dad taught me. And, the third, and he wrote this book in his 80s. He's like 84, 85, something like that. So he's at the end of his life. And the third thing is, you know, maybe five things that my, my wife taught me, right? One of the things that, that his mom told him, one of the things that his mom, mom told him was, don't strike back. 
when people strike you, not talking about physically, when people come at you, they're accusing you. They're coming, they're, he said, she said, don't strike back. Which, what is she saying? You're going to have to love. You're going you're to have to forgive. Yeah. And so this is, what, this is what he said. And this is right, right, right toward the end of the book. He said, whatever sweetness I have from Jesus in my life and calling, it is due in great part to my practice of never striking back. I just trust that if I obey Jesus, stay little in my own eyes, and do my work without expecting a lot of praise, he will take care of me and my ministry. What is he talking about? Allowing the love of God to win. To pursue this kind of, of life, a life of love, can I tell you the truth? There, there, it will be painful at times. Or to your flesh, it, it be painful, it'll be challenging. It really will. And there'll be days where you, you do maybe really great with it. And there may be other days where, oof, you might need to repent uh, to God or to other people, maybe to yourself. But if you need to do that, just go ahead and do that. Make it right and do it as quickly as possible. Okay? Keeping in mind ever that the love of God that we just read about how it behaves and acts is really a definition of the God kind of love, the kind of love that he is. So God isn't requiring you to be patient and kind with your brother, your sister, your friend, your mom, your dad, your kids or whatever, coworker. But then God won't, is not going to be patient and kind with you. Right? No, no, there's grace. If you miss it, don't stay in the dumps for three months on it. You know what I mean? If you, if, you let, if you let it fly off the handle and you lose it, it's like, well, love wouldn't do that. Well, yeah, love wouldn't do that, but you did. <laughs> Amen. So just repent. Amen. If you have to repent to God, if you have to re repent to people, I can tell you this, it's very humbling when you have to, to apologize or to say I'm sorry or to repent to someone, but it needs to be done if it needs to be done. But after you do that a number of times, at some point you should realize, I don't like this. It would be better for me to just bite my tongue. It would be better for me not to send that text. It would be, it'd be better for me not to send that email. It would be better for me not to go down that line of thinking. Because really a step out of love, the God kind of love, is a step out of God. So I don't want to step outside of God's best for my life, which would be walking in the love that he has for me and the love that he's given to me. So I choose. So that same minister I quoted a little bit ago, Kenneth E. Hagin, he said it this way. I decided a long time ago. I decided a long time ago. I'm going to walk in love whether anybody else does or not. Boy, that's a challenge. Because sometimes you preach a message like this, you know, and we all get to hear it. And so it's easy for us to look across, you know, the aisle or somebody and go, now you're not in love right now. I can't, you're not walking in love. That wasn't love, right? Well, the point of a message like this isn't so that you can all of a sudden know who's in and out of walking in love. That's not the point. It's not something you can hold over your, your spouse's head and go, see there, you loser. <laughs> You're not mature. You're like that. You're the first picture of that apple. You know what I'm saying, you little jerk? <laughs> you need to grow, okay? That's what Pastor Aaron said, grow. You ain't doing it, so what's going on? That's the reason we are terrible. It's like, well, it's going to take some time. It's going to take some, some intentionality to walk and to grow in the love of God. So when Paul says, pursue this, make this your aim, your great quest. Go after a life of love as if your life depended on it, because it does. Those are strong words. Okay. Okay, I'll take it seriously. I'll close with this. In 1 Peter 4, 
I believe it's verse, verse 8. It says, and above all things, above all things, have fervent love for one another, for love will cover a multitude of sins. Above, somebody just say all things. What does that include? Everything. What does it exclude? No, nothing. Above all things. That's why in 1 Corinthians 13, he says, three things are going to last forever. Faith, hope, love. But the greatest of these is love. Above all things. Praise the Lord. So this is what we're going to do as, as we close. Um, there's a confession of the love of God that we're going to make together. So we're going to put it on the screen. And uh, there's a number of different ones that, there, that you could that you could look at in different confessions, declarations that you could say. And we've had a lot of different ones over the years. But this is one we're going to have for today. You ready for it? We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna read it or confess it together as a church family. Amen. You ready? One, two, three. The love of God, the God kind of love, has been shed abroad in my heart by the Holy Ghost. Therefore, I am a lover, even as my heavenly Father is a lover. I am not a hater. Therefore, I will let that love, the love nature of God, dominate my entire being. I will walk in the royal law of God. I will talk the God kind of love. I will act in the God kind of love. For I am a new creation in Christ Jesus. Under the new covenant, I'm going to walk in God's statutes and commandments by walking in the law of the new covenant, which is to walk in the royal law of love.